understand, most of these people are not ready to be unplugged. If you're listening to this, you are your assistant. Your assistant. We are five days away from fundamentally transforming the United States of America. It's a trap! All right, everybody, welcome back to the Oh Hell Yeah Show. I've got a guest today that definitely should be on your radar if he's not, especially in light of what's happened with the Bruce Jenner circus in the media. I think the best thing to do is to go to the source and speak to someone who's actually, quote, been there, done that, and got the T-shirt. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce Mr. Walt Heyer of sexchangeregret.com. Walt, how are you? I'm great, great. Thanks for having me on. Hey, I appreciate your time today. You know, as I was uh, doing some homework... I found a link at Media Matters, which I know, I think we can all agree is a very trustworthy source for truth and news. Not really, that's sarcastic. But here's the description they posed for you. You are, and I want my audience to know this, full disclosure, you are a popular quote unquote right wing activist with extreme discredited views about LGBT people. And you're making the media rounds to talk about Caitlyn Jenner peddling the myth that many transgender people end up regretting transitioning. You're a source of extreme transphobic commentary. And you even called Chaz Bono a poser transgender because she resisted having a Snoopy attached. This all to me brings up one important question. Did you choose to be a terrible person or were you born that way? <laughs> well, that's a, that's a hard question to answer, isn't it? Well, first off, um, you know, I don't even, uh, I have no angst against the LGBT itself. I have a great deal of problem with them uh, suggesting that uh, becoming a transgender is safe when 41% of them attempt suicide. So that's that's the thing that they don't like. And the fact that um, the World Health Organization says it's a mental disorder to be uh, transsexual. Um, and because there are research studies that show 60 to 70% of the people they found I, that identified as transgender also said that they were suffering from uh, disorders. So uh, when you have this and, and you throw it out there, which is what the research shows, they're not real happy with me. It seems like there's a lot of similarities amongst all these movements. I look at uh, the settled science of climate change. I look at the things that are pushed as narratives and they're truthful. And I look at all the people that are hurt by it. And I always say, what's the, what's the end game? What's the reason that they allow all these people to delude themselves and to be hurt? And the, the human casualties are meaningless because they have to push the narrative. And the transgender one to me is a little more difficult. I get climate change. I get some of the other ones that are out there. Abortion is one that I feel strongly about where people are hurt so that they can peddle a lie. What I really wanted to have you on today was to talk about why it's so important for them to hide the statistics behind what really happens to transgender people after their surgery. And the other thing that I want to bring up is this Media Matters article was written by someone who said that you've touted your story as proof that being transgender is a mental problem that can be treated or cured, but it makes you an odd choice for mainstream media outlets, which should be emphasizing the commentary of experts rather than the fringe voices. I thought it was interesting that you, someone who's actually been through this and done it, is a fringe voice. And this person who's studied it and has various degrees is an expert. Does that ever strike you as odd? Well, no. I mean, you know, the, the, the thing that the left does better than anybody is marginalize anybody that um, has got some good information. And when we realize that this really isn't much different than the climate change, it, it's all political. Uh, this is a political power group that is trying to advance an agenda to broaden their base for financial funding to continue this whole process of trying to tell people that, uh, you know, gender change is good, when in fact, a lot of people regret it. And uh, so, so you, when you realize it's a political play, uh, then you kind of, it starts to take the focus. It's, you know, especially with younger people, which... Uh, it always frustrates me because I am a younger person and I'll talk and they go, it's not political. It's about love and feelings and about discovering yourself. But you just said, I believe it's the American Psychiatric Association that refers to gender, gender identity uh, dysphoria as a disorder, quote unquote disorder. And so for, yeah, actually for me, it's the World Health Organization uh, that refers to it as a disorder. All of the places in the United States that refer to it have been uh, so... Uh, marginalized by the, the LGBT that they're afraid to say it, even though they might believe it. So 
when you get outside the U.S., then you begin to get a little bit better picture of the fact that uh, there, uh, disorders are quite common among this population. And that, let's face it, if you're happy about changing your gender, then 41% of them wouldn't be attempting suicide. You would expect their rate actually to be lower than the general population, which is less than 3%. But the fact of the matter is more than 41% of them are attempting suicide. So, uh, you know, if you got a little bit of gray matter and can sit down and think about this for a minute, what they're saying makes no sense. And they don't like me saying that. Yeah, I think that's where the discredited extreme views about LGBT people comment was made. And I look at it, you know, as someone, anytime I get into a political discussion or even an argument, I say, look, leave politics aside. Let's play, pretend we came down from another planet and we didn't know anything about what happens here. And we said a certain act is resulting in 40% of the people who do it attempting to kill themselves. Let's just start with that as the baseline. Where do we go from here? Right. Yeah. And, and Jenner has already said on the interview that he had that, you know, he came out of a clinic and all the paparazzi were there and he came home and paced the floor that night thinking about committing suicide. So we realize that people who have these transgender ideology are fragile psychologically. So uh, we see this throughout, you know, I've been doing this uh, at this level for almost 10 years, and uh, I've had people contact me via uh, email saying, I'm getting ready to go down to the corner, buy a gun and blow my brains out. Is there anything you can do to help me? And I, I had read about Bruce Jenner, and it's interesting in terms of how happy he is now and how accepting and how he's broken Twitter records for having so many followers and ostensible supporters that thoughts of suicide have entered his mind. I mean, how much happier does he need to be to not want to end his own life? That's the question I would ask. Well, and, and let's face it, he's at, this is as good as it's going to be. They Somebody reported yesterday he's going to make about $500 million uh, off of this whole um, gender change thing. Um, and I, I kiddingly told somebody, if somebody offered me $500 million, I'd probably change my gender. <laughs> yeah. Was that, do we know if that's ahead of analyst predictions yet or how's he, how's he faring with, uh, the, because they must've had projections going into this, right? If you buy into the theory that this was all a stunt for PR. Yeah. I, you know, I, I don't know. My concern is though, when the, when the cameras go off and the shows are over and, uh, the plastic surgery doesn't look as good as it does today. Uh, and he's all alone, and it's not as much fun as it is today with all the attention. Uh, if he's considering suicide, this is going to be the time when the darkness shows. Yeah, I think that's pretty profound. It, you know, it, it's funny that you said it's never going to be this good again. I refer to that as the new car smell, right? This is it's like when you have your new car and you go, as soon as I sit in this thing and drive it, it's it's never going to be the same. This is as good as it gets, and it, there's well, no going up. Yeah, that's what that's the way it was for me. I mean, I came out, I was excited after surgery. I thought it was the best thing. I, I lived that way for eight years. And it's it's this tapering off. And it's what I see in the letters that I get from people who write me and say they regret changing genders, genders uh, three years down the road, five, seven, 10, 15. I even got one letter from somebody who wrote me 30 years later that told me they regretted it at 15 years and it took them 15 years to admit it. You talked about psychological trauma. I've read your bio. I know that you suffered uh, mental, if not physical abuse. Maybe you can enlighten me on exactly what that was. But I know my wife and I will watch the news or watch Dateline and you see, you start to see patterns and trends. Aside from ideolo ideology and politics, you see that there's certain cause and effect in place that's almost inarguable. Uh, and so I wasn't surprised to find out that you had been abused. What I think is interesting is that, uh, I was pretty young when Silence of the Lambs came out, but that's the first time I remember in Hollywood seeing a, a mainstream production about someone who was quote unquote transgender. The problem was he was a crazed killer, right? He skinned people alive. And I was a little older when Red Dragon came out. Same thing. Crazed killer, suffered horrible abuse when he was a child. Was there a lot of public backlash because of that narrative? I was just too young to remember. But I would think, based on what they've said about you, that if Hollywood was to portray someone in the LGBT community, that was probably one of those movies that couldn't get made today for that reason. Well, you know, s certain people are fair game uh, for, for abuse from the media, and some people aren't. Hollywood gets a free pass. I don't. 
Uh, that I can only tell you that the people who've contacted me who wish they hadn't done it, regret it, and want to go back, uh, every, every last one of them was abused in some way, neglected in some way. There was some trauma that happened, uh, some event that each one of those people, because I make a point of asking them, had, can point to that became the onset of their gender dysphoria that led them down this pathway. So we're not looking to treat the childhood issues uh, that cause people to want to change their gender, but we're looking to just change their gender. And I, I'm always wanting to know why you don't want to be who you are so you can become someone who you're not. This is really interesting. I didn't realize that everyone that contacted you had those abuse issues. I believe it because I think that's a, a leading root cause, and I think that stems to other areas as well besides well, just— Well, yeah, and I want to I be clear about that. Some of them, it was neglect. Some of them had a parent that was in a psychiatric hospital and an alcoholic father. They had one group, a couple that I met with, the, the parents. They were both drug addicts. And both of their kids became transgenders uh, because the parent, I walked away after having lunch with them and saying, you know, if those were my parents, I would have been a transgender. They were really crazy. So this takes me to the next point about the push, especially for young children. You know, you read these stories of transgender bathrooms, of parents that are letting their kids cross dress before they're 10 years old. And I think to myself, what good is going to come of further confusing a child in the most pretty much confusing time of their lives? The reason they have parents, the reason they have trusted adults is to help them become quote unquote normal or follow a path that's going to lead to their fulfilling their best interest. And then you have people coming out and not only pushing them in directions that cause further confusion and ultimately pain, but attaching words to it like bravery and uh, courage. Right. Well, I, I wrote about this today because I think it's, um, and published an article about it today, because I think it's so disturbing. What we need to realize is that, um, you know, this is being uh, pushed by the White House. I mean, they have got the LGBT agenda uh, in the school system. And I wrote an article about it today on the publicdiscourse.com. Uh, if anybody wants to go look at it and get the detail, because it's a, it's about 2000 words. But um, yeah, it's a very troubling thing that we have used our schools to indoctrinate kids into this new social change ideology uh, that genders are fluid, genders are anything you want them to be, and that uh, parents really are being pushed out of uh, raising their children in the way they want to raise them. Is, do you think it has anything to do with Obama being transgender? <laughs> <laughs> do you want to say that again? <laughs> I said, are you confirming the uh, the assertions that Obama has had a Snoopy attached? Uh, you know what? I'm not going to go there. Uh, you know, I'll leave that for the people. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I cannot confirm nor deny it. Okay. All right. There's just, uh, there's Vegas odds makers pretty much putting together numbers on which one has been transgendered, Michelle or Obama. We know for sure that one of them has. So we'll leave that for a different day. But, uh, <laughs> all right, well, uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'll leave that one to the rest of the people. I'm not going there. Yeah. That's not fringe expert, fringe voices. Those are experts. But, uh, you know, I was reading one of your other articles where you talk about some of the other prominent questions that should be asked. And one is that if there is no such thing as gender, change regret, then why are there so many people making a great living off of surgery reversal? I wanted you to talk about that a little bit. Right. Yeah. I, I was very curious about that when somebody wrote me and, and said that uh, there's uh, doctors around the world that are doing the uh, performing the surgery and, and remaking Snoopy. And I, I thought, well, that's very curious. Uh, they're telling me that it's very rare. And, and in fact, that I, well, I've been told I was the only one that was even known at one time. Well, how come there's so many surgeons that are doing this here in the U.S. and and across the water in um, I think Bolshevik stations or places, countries? But so, you know, uh, that is curious, isn't it? Uh, if, if it's rare, why are they doing it? And um, so it's not rare. That's why. You know, you said earlier, well, we talked about the World Health Organization labeling this as a disorder. And 
it's it's always interesting to me as I look at Bruce Jenner and I try to take all the gloss off of it and go, what is really happening here? You've got someone who people are arguing that this is a brave or honorable or courageous thing and others saying it's a disorder. Well, if it's been designated as a disorder, I'm just curious, what other disorders are out there when people act out or they display this disordered behavior that we all kind of clamor and go, oh, good for that person. Way to demonstrate who you are. That's 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 something that should be admired and even uh, replicated in society. And so I was looking at some of the most common disorders that I could think of. One of them is an eating disorder. Like when someone has an eating disorder and it's killing them and they, they run into the toilet and stick their hand in their mouth, do we all like get up and give them a standing ovation and say, you know what? Well done. Let's call the local news station. Let's give this person an award. Uh, schizophrenia, right. d- Tourette's. I mean, what other common disorder is there where people celebrate it so much and make such a, a gala out of it? Well, this is the only one. And, and uh, of course, narcissism uh, has got to be a part of the play in this. Uh, when there's such focus on the appearance uh, and you know, there was a time when you could point to Jenner and his accomplishments. Now we point to Jenner and talk about what he looks like. So, uh, you know, it's narcissism at its best, but I I just can't discount the play that the the financial side has in this. If there were no money in this, you got to wonder how this would play out. That's a good point. It's a very good point. You talked about Bruce Jenner. I read your article on The Federalist, which I really enjoyed. I, I think it's a great website. The guy from Media Matters doesn't like The Federalist, but I do. No, no. And uh, you talked about the gender romance ending in Bruce Jenner's quote unquote hangover. And when you related it back to yourself, you said, quote, the shame of being so narcissistic and self-absorbed as a transgender female and knowing that I had hurt the ones I loved resulted in deep depression and regret. I can admit that transition was the biggest mistake of my life. And then you commented that this is something you hear repeated from all those people that contact you. And I think the biggest mistake of your life, that's a bold statement. Why isn't there, why aren't there more speed bumps or do not back up, you know, forks on the way to the biggest mistake of people's lives? Because they, you, you've mentioned other articles, it's too easy to do it. Is it just the money? Well, you know, today we got to remember that the people who are going in and requesting uh, reassignment surgery are, are given a green light from the giddy up. So they're given hormones right off the top. They're pushed toward the surgery. No one looks for disorders. No one wants to find any disorders. No one wants to ask what their childhood was like. So we're seeing a lot of people. I think we're going to continue until such time as they begin to do deeper work on people who request this to find why they want a a gender change. Uh, We're still going to see high rates of suicide. We're going to see high rates of success or uh, suicides. And we're going to see people uh, who are pushing back like I am, because I've got another person coming out uh, about this uh, because he went through it. He happens to be a physician and he's going to be talking about it in the next couple of months. So uh, he's just trying to get uh, his life together so that he doesn't get beat up badly like um I am. So uh, I don't know your background, if there's any religion or, um, you know, what your, if, if, what your faith preferences are, if any, but I just want to share mine. And I think one of the things about being Christian and believing as I do is that we believe that the root cause of all sin is deception. You know, we talk about what happened before we got to this life. It had to do with, uh, trying to deceive people to not go in this direction. So without getting into all that, I look at the amount of deception present and some of the issues today, this being one huge one, abortion being one I mentioned earlier, climate change. If you can't confuse people, then they'll never be, if you, I'm sorry, if you can confuse people, you don't have to convince them. Just get them in a state of confusion. Then they are easier and more malleable to put in a place where they actually harm themselves. And that's kind of how I look at this in the very simplistic overview. So what I want to talk about is like when I read earlier that you can't even get, you just said they give you the green light from the giddy up, but I read also that they can't do the surgery for 12 months, which ironically is how long people like Axl Rose used to counsel people to wait before they got a tattoo. It's like, if you want a tattoo, wait for a year. And if you still want it, then get it. And I call that the confusion buffer zone, right? Is that rule yeah. in place for the transgender surgery still? And should it be longer? Should it be two years, five well, years? Let's let's talk about being honest about this. The, the guideline is a year. The fact of the matter is people can get the surgery within 30 days after they decide to do it if they want. Uh, all they need to do is get a letter 
from somebody who says they are suffering from gender dysphoria. They take the letter and they can go to Thailand and get the surgery done. They can go to all kinds of places which they do to get the surgery done. They don't have to wait a year. Uh, as long as they get a letter and many of the people will write the letter fairly quickly. Do you think that additional time on that buffer would make any, I mean, what do you do when you get someone who's confused and nobody cares about them enough to say, Hey, look, like I compared it to abortion earlier. When someone says, Hey, I'd rather have the $300 for killing your child than to actually talk to you and counsel you through this problem that I can so obviously see because I'm thinking I'm in a clearer state of mind. What is the solution? Well, I think the solution is number one, you do not give anyone hormones uh, when they first come in because their hormones are a very powerful drug that changes the way you think, feel, and behave. So number one, no hormones for at least two years uh, after they re make a request. The problem with saying that statement is they can go online and get them out of Canada and other places around the street. So, uh, you know, while that's a good guideline, people will still go get the hormones. They uh, Transgenders abuse hormones. So, if, But if we could get them to not take hormones for two years and then get good psychotherapy that would look for what we call the comorbid disorders, the underlying disorders, which is, you know, bipolar disorder, separation anxiety, dissociative disorders, schizophrenia, personality disorders, obsessive compulsive and narcissism are basically the ones that are driving this transgender population to have a desire for suicide or for sex change. And then eventually uh, if untreated turns to suicide. So those are the things that are most important. And, and back in 1979, Dr. Illenfeld who had worked with Dr. Harry Benjamin for some six years administering hormone therapy to transgender, six, 500 of them, I guess, over six years, uh, said that he wanted to stop doing it because he saw too much unhappiness and too many suicides. That was in 1979, nothing's changed today. So, you know, because of the advocacy and because they're pushing now to prevent people, especially young people from having any therapy that would suggest they can, uh, you know, resolve the desire to change gender, which is a flat out lie. Uh, but so they're trying to prevent people from discovering what the, dis the disorders are so that they don't have the desire. So it's it, this is the craziest thing I've ever seen. It is transgenderism in terms of changing someone's gender. I have said many times written about it is the single greatest medical fraud in history. And you just made a pretty articulate case about why it's all based on deception. And the, if you play that out to its natural conclusion, the deception is based in either ignorance or evil. Someone who has something to gain by hurting other people is evil. I mean, that's the one thing that all evil, especially dictators, killers have in common. They're willing to sacrifice otherwise innocent people for their own benefit, which is why I go back to the question, what's really in it? What's the end game? Why? hurt and damage all these people. I mean, do, and you've called it irreparable damage, right? F things you can't fix right. for what to push this movement that eventually will implode, but how much damage will it do before that happens? And that goes back to what I said earlier about the sin being deception. The deception is that you can actually change from a man to a yeah. woman. You cannot, it can't be done. It's impossible. No, no I mean, it's, it's, it's a total masquerade and, you know, and I realized that after a few years, and uh, yeah, I am a person of faith. You know, I found uh, Christ in in my life and, and have turned my life over to him. And, uh, you know, there's there's a certain amount of, uh, like always with faith, you have to come and admit you've done something wrong and then ask for forgiveness and then begin to transform your life and allow the Lord to work in your life. And certainly that happened in mine. So, but if you don't allow that to take place, then certainly nothing good is going to come of it. So I actually have a, a solution to the question I posed to you earlier. And that is something that when I read this comment about the Snoopy, I laugh because my wife and I were watching Bruce Jenner. And I said, look, he wrote in an article that he's not ready to have um, his man parts removed. That'll be the last thing that he does. And I said, you know, and this is kind of in jest. I know it's serious, but I said, until he's ready to commit to being a woman, there should be no cameras rolling at all. 
because to me, you know, if you really think you're a woman and you want to be a woman, that's, that has to happen. So anyway, I said, you know, that my, my tagline was show me the penis until that happens. You're not, you're not even serious about this. But the flip side is I feel terrible for people who have that take that step and then feel like they made a mistake. Like you said, that that is a horrible thing to have to live with, to know that you made a decision that you can't fix and you don't feel like it was a mistake. Right. And that's the same thing that, that I said about Chaz Bono. Chaz Bono never had anything attached. So, you know, it was basically had her breast removed, but the, that was the end of the surgery. And, you know, we see these stories about, you know, man having a baby. Well, it's not a man having a baby. It's a woman who claims to be a man having a baby. So, you know, we're, we're being inundated with uh, a lot of lies, deception, as you said. And uh, a lot of people are buying into it. You know, we got we, the codependency here is just off the chart. Yeah. And, and that begs a better question. You know, when Facebook came out with these 30 whatever designations for gender status, I don't know if you remember that story it came out a few oh, months yeah. ago. And I don't pretend to remember what any of them were. I just remember that LGBT didn't cut it because the transgenders, the transgenders are upset that they're getting lumped in with the same group of people who they don't feel like have anything in common with them. And so they had to branch it out. But here's the thing. What about all the dis designations for how transgender you are? Because really that doesn't cut it either. I mean, if you can, if you're a man and you can have a baby and you haven't had anything snipped off, but you don't have a uterus or ovaries, like we, Google needs to get on this and actually give us thousands of classifications so that we can get them in the public school system and get all the right forms created. Don't you think? Well, you know, I think they had to just go back to the way it was and forget all this nonsense. It's just, you know, it's no wonder kids are struggling and we have young people wondering who they are. Uh, they're questioning it. They see it on every every TV show. They've got some transgender homosexual thing going on in shows today that's just driving kids crazy. If you can make them question who they are, you can turn them into anything you want them to be. Absolutely. And that's the rub. So, and basically we've also learned that you're, you're anti-progress is what you're saying. You're against progress. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> that got, got you on the record there. P-R-O-G-R-E-S-S. -S. Yeah. Last thing I want to ask you about relates to all this. And I actually have a personal connection to a gentleman named Mike Jenner. I've been asked not to go into how that is, or I'm sorry, Mike Penner, not Jenner. That's somebody else. Oh, right. Uh, right. But Mike Penner was a darling for the LGBT movement. And he ended up taking his life. He became a statistic. Right. And it, before that happened, he admitted that he had basically lost everything that was important to him. And... Like what you said earlier, I mean, he's someone who became, he went from being a darling and, and loved amongst his peers to a fringe voice that they had to silence. And right. the same question I asked you, I would ask him, you know, was he born a hateful person or was he made that way? Because that's what he was accused of being towards the end as someone who had nothing to offer uh, those who formerly were his friends and supporters. And I think that's really a tragedy. Right. Well, the advocates would really like for people like Mike Penner. And that was, that was really such an incredibly sad story to me. I mean, um, I, I can't even begin to tell you, but unfortunately the LGBT people and the hateful things they say about me, they would much prefer that I commit suicide so that I'm silenced. They would like all the voices who oppose their agenda, their ideology, and the things that they're telling people, they would like us all silenced. But, you know, um, I'm not gonna take my life and I'm going to keep talking. The one thing about, I call myself a conservatarian. And when I get into it with my libertarian friends, I once heard someone say, you know, if libertarian would be the best thing to be if it wasn't for wars and children. And I want to focus on children right now. I had Bobby Lopez on my show. I don't know if you're familiar with him or not, but he's, he definitely is a persona non grata to the liberal left. And it's because he's okay with gay marriage. He is bisexual, although he's in a heterosexual marriage, but he's made the case that uh, involving children in gay marriages and gay families is akin to the slave trade because it's ownership of property as opposed to actually having children. And he said some pretty, quote unquote, hurtful things that's got him into hot water and they hate him. But I look at this and say, you know, it's, it's not too different for me as far as the damage that goes into the kids and the confusion that results. So... I don't really know what my question is, aside from the fact that I think it's all tied together as far as involving children from a young age in this whole confusion and deception of they can be whatever they want to be. All they have to do is see the right doctor. Right. Well, children, let's face it, are the future. And the more 
children they can flip to the LGBT agenda, uh, the less difficulty they're going to have and the fewer people like me they're going to have. And that's why they're in the schools and that's why they're pushing the agenda. To me, uh, it is the most abhorrent thing that we have going on. If I had a kid in a public school, I wouldn't let him go to public school. I would pull my kids out. I think we ought to have a remove all your kids from public school day uh, and, and let them see what it's like when the parents begin to take control of the public schools and not the White House and the LGBT. More anti-progress. You're just, you're a hater for sure. I am. I am. You know, I, I hate the fact that they're ruining kids' lives. And if that's a bad thing, then, hey, I'll own up to it. You know, uh, I really appreciate you coming on, Walt, uh, and, and laying some truth down to this ridiculous uh, charade that we're seeing. What are your predictions as far as how this ends with Mr. Jenner? And before I ask you that, or before you answer, rather, it's important to know that Bruce Jenner has had some trauma in his life. I mean, you've written about his brother dying and him taking responsibility for that or feeling the guilt for that. And then also recently, he killed someone in a car accident right before he had it, right when he was having his surgery. Combine that with this, you know, paparazzi circus, and you've got a pretty dangerous uh, cocktail. Well, that's that's real concerning because um, we have a lot of dynamics going on. I certainly would not want to see him uh, commit suicide, uh, not at all. But I fear for the fact that he is dealing with a great deal of stressor points in his life right now, and and when he gets into trial and begins to go through this uh, trial for the death on the Pacific Coast Highway in California, and a lot of things are going to come up, and the paparazzi are going to be there just like they were outside the clinic. It's not going to be a good time for him. So uh, I don't know how it's going to turn out. I hope it turns out good for him, but if with 41% of them attempting suicide and the stressors that Jenner's got already in place, it's risky business. And just so everyone's clear, if they're not familiar with your story, you did live as Laura Jensen when you turned 42, and you did that for approximately eight years before changing right. back to uh, Walt Heyer. Was there anybody who was judgmental and threw up the stop sign and said, hey, stop, turn the truck around? Or I think the line you used was the bridge is out, right? Is there anyone who threw that at you? Yeah. No, nobody was really, uh, you know, and I, and, um, I, I think it would be much healthier uh, for the people who feel like they want to say something that a transgender might not want to hear. That doesn't mean be abusive or unkind or or toxic, but be uh, be honest about how you feel and tell them. I had a friend of mine who uh, didn't like what I did, and instead of calling me Walter or Laura, he just called me Wacko, which I actually appreciated that. I thought that was very endearing. And uh, so, you know, what I'm thinking about doing, though, to try to follow Jenner's deal is I'm, I'm thinking about coming out on Sanity Fair magazine with a cover shot of me coming back, you know. Interesting. And uh, I think that'd be great, don't you? Yeah, except that, you know, you're going to, you talked about people being honest with their feelings, but we live in a world where that's been equated as hate speech and judgmentality. So I don't think that's a coincidence at all. I think I was watching a Breaking Bad episode where Jesse, I don't know if you watched the show, but he was Jesse Hall, uh, Jesse Hall, Jesse Pinkman was at his little focus group class and he came out and started telling people they should be judgmental and that they're all losers and enablers because they're not. And so, uh, you go on sanity fair and I'm going to go on uh, righteous judgment and we'll, we'll try to release our magazines at the same time. But really to me, uh, I call judge being judgmental, being observational and the lack of our observational prowess is, uh, is really killing us. So, I, I appreciate yeah. the struggle that you're fighting and what you're doing. I love reading your articles because when it comes to fringe experts, fringe voices versus experts, I know to trust people who've actually been there, done that. And I am curious before we go, what's the next year look like for you? You talked about the magazine cover. What else are you doing to take the fight back to these people who are peddling lies and, and hurt? Yeah, of course, the magazine cover is a joke, but uh, I, love I, it. I thought it would be funny if I did that and put it on my website. But I am trying to put a book out that has the letters that I've gotten 
uh, once I get approval to put them in a book, because I have a lot of letters from people who write about their regret, uh, just so that the public can actually see that uh, there are far more people than me. Most people are fearful of coming out and saying they regret it because of the blowback. And that's part of the play that uh, the advocates have. They want you to live in fear uh, so that you don't come out and share the the dark side of being uh, transgender and, and regretting doing it. And that actually brings me back to the last question. With reading this Mike Penner article, the thing that really struck me is when he said, I had everything and I lost it all. And yeah. it's, it's somber to think that here's someone who was so confused, he thought the solution was becoming a woman, and he looks back and realized he had everything he needed. Can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, I said the very same words because I was an executive uh, in a $300 million automobile company. Oh, wow. I had a great job. I had a great family, kids. I had it all, just like Pinner. And so, um, you know, this is where we are in this situation. There are nobody willing to step up and provide psychotherapy to help people prevent them from going through this and prevent them from taking hormones, from looking at the, the comorbid disorders that would actually, if treated properly, the desire would go away. Well, thank you again. We look forward to tracking you to, uh, to following the articles and publications you put out. And I really appreciate your time and what you're doing. So let me know if you ever need any help. And you should make that sanity fair, at least an image. And we'll make sure the uh, the Twitter warriors flood the earth with it. I think it'd be fantastic. Yeah, we're thinking about making one up and I get on there with, uh, you know, some kind of... Uh cool shot, you know, maybe in a lumberjack outfit or something, you know. <laughs> yeah, you do that and we'll do all the hard work as far as spreading it out for you. That'd be no problem. All at right, all. I'll, I'll, I'll get it out there for you. Well, thank you so much. Good luck to you. My pleasure. Thanks for having me on. You're listening to the absolute unadulterated truth, courtesy of the Oh Hail Yeah Show. Want more? Oh, Hail yeah, you do. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. Make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing to the Young Cons podcast on iTunes or SoundCloud. And make sure to check us out online at youngcons.com slash podcast. Or chat us up on Twitter at Real TJ Hale. But I'm a big fan of money. I like it. I use it. I have a little. I keep it in a jar on top of my refrigerator. I'd like to put more in that jar. That's where you come in.